Plans can be shattered in the blink of an eye. I received an alarming, unexpected phone call. I'm just getting there as fast as I can. A family emergency. So right now she's in ICU. Which led to a 33-hour emotional road trip. Every mile, a battle against time and uncertainty. So I'm on a road trip and it has a different feel to it. My daughter is pregnant in Nevada and I just heard last night that she's going into labor a month early. So I had a lot of plans to go out there in two weeks to be with her before she had the baby and to be there when she had the baby. And I'm just really worried about her. It just seems like a whole lot of miles. Normally I'm so excited going cross country. I just want to be there. My GPS says I'll be there in a day and nine hours. <laughs> That's a long time. That's if I drive straight, right? I know everything will be okay. I know everything will be okay. Good news, I just got an update from my son-in-law that the baby's almost here. And my daughter has an epidural now, so she's feeling more comfortable. It's very emotional. I just wish I was there with them. Just hoping everything's okay with her. at the rest area on I-10 with the dogs. I heard from my son-in-law a couple hours ago and he said that the baby's almost here and he said my daughter is doing really well. But then I haven't heard anything, so I just want to get there. And this country is so big. <laughs> Usually I love that the country is so big, but when you want to get somewhere fast and your GPS says you'll be there in one hour and five days, it's not fast enough. Yay! We made it out of Florida. Dogs look very uneasy. Uh, we haven't been on a long trip since November. I've been in Florida helping my parents, so maybe they're just not used to traveling. to bird sounds to calm me down because my daughter has to get emergency C-section under general anesthesia. So I just wish I was there with them. But the birds are helping. Thank you birds. Okay, can you tell that I left my parents' house in a hurry? Look at all that. My clothes were still wet. All my stuff is in bags. I gotta clean up. These dogs will just lay right on that stuff. I just ran to the corner market and got a few things to make a super, super quick dinner. So I got some broccolini that I'm gonna throw in the microwave and just make a bean burrito and eat that up and go to sleep. It's the first time I'm using my microwave off grid. So I'm gonna try that all powers solar generator and see if that works. Cause I don't have an inverter in here. So when I'm off grid, my microwave and my air conditioner 
and all the AC plugs don't work. So hopefully this works because I'm starving and I want dinner like now. I'm hangry y'all. So I hope this works y'all, y'all. I'm not Southern, I'm from New Jersey. Okay, I'm gonna throw this broccolini in there. I'm doing stuff quick. I plugged it in. Now let's turn on. Looks like it's gonna work. Three to five minutes. Let's try five. Cool. And this guy is putting out some watts. So these vegetarian refried beans don't have much flavor. So I'm going to have to add some maybe cumin, chili, salt, pepper to that. Jazz it up. Here's how the quick dinner came out. I'm gonna enjoy it with an NA beer. I'm so hungry and tired. It's been a whirlwind of a day. Just driving and keeping up with my son-in-law. So my daughter did have to get a C-section with general anesthesia. So right now she's in ICU and Josh said that it's just a precaution that that's what their procedure is for that hospital so but he said that she's doing well that she's doing well so I hope to talk to her maybe tomorrow morning and I'm gonna enjoy my dinner and go to sleep because I am exhausted <laughs> and I'm excited I'm a new grandma yeah Cecilia Marie I didn't know I would be this emotional, but I am. I am a new grandma. <laughs> We're waking up in a Cracker Barrel in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I'm having a hard time getting up this morning. It was a long drive yesterday. And then I guess all the emotion of the baby and what was going on with my daughter. Just, I just feel really tired this morning. But I think Lilo's burying a bone. Lilo. <laughs> go in and get a coffee and start our day get back on the road oh my god so so it's 11 25 and I'm just getting on the road now I am exhausted I think it was just the night before I didn't sleep at all because I was worried about my daughter and the baby and then I got on the road early early for me like 8 a.m. And then I was just driving, driving until it got dark. And I'm just, ah, I'm recuperating, I guess. So I'm, I feel better. The baby's healthy. My daughter's doing well. So I'm planning to drive. I don't know how, how long until it gets dark today. And the big question is, to go through Dallas or not to go through Dallas. <laughs> of course, it says it's like an hour less if I go through Dallas, but ah, I don't like going through Dallas. It's, it's like going through Atlanta. It sucks. It just adds to my stress level to go through a big city. In the past, to go through Atlanta, I would get up super early and go through like super early, like 4.30 and drive through before all the rush hour traffic starts. And that was a good plan. I didn't have that plan today. I just needed to rest. So Dallas or no Dallas. 
I'll let you know. this it's a European little camper van. His steering wheel is on the on the right side. So they probably had this guy shipped all the way from Europe. I didn't talk to them. They didn't make eye contact. I'll talk to people if they make eye contact, but if they don't make eye contact, I just figure they're doing their thing and they don't want to engage, which is okay. Well, he's still in Mississippi. <laughs> Like normally when I drive, I kind of plan it out and stop and see people along the way or go to um, disperse camping or, you know, see different things along the way. But because I just want to get there, it feels like it's taking forever. It's day two. So maybe I'll get there in two days, three days. <laughs> and I don't like to drive more than four hours in a day, five hours. So going 33 hours, just driving, trying to get there is kind of overwhelming to me. That's usually not the way I do things, but I want to see my granddaughter. I want to see my daughter and son-in-law. So I'm pushing on. Ugh. When I start traveling and get back on the road again, I feel like I'm defrosting because I just spent like four months in Florida helping my parents out and trying to stay in the vicinity to help my parents out. Or since I couldn't get camping, I stayed with them for the past two months almost. And even though I want to be there for them, like not being where I I would love to be, which is in the Southwest, hanging out with friends, having campfires, just being out of the city. I came to a spot of acceptance. I love my parents. I want to be there for them. But when you're temporarily living a life that you don't want to be living, it kind of takes a toll on you. And I, maybe that's the exhaustion I'm feeling now that I'm finally temporarily out of that and I feel like I'm defrosting and coming back to myself. Maybe I'll find dispersed camping tonight and just hear nature and get out off of these highways. I'm taking the highways intentionally because I want to take the fastest route, but highways, cities, I need Nature RX and I'll look for Nature RX tonight. Louisiana! Welcome to Louisiana. <laughs> Yay! We're west of the Mississippi! 80% of the U.S. population lives east of the Mississippi. This is not true. This is what I found out on YouTube. This invisible line separating the more developed east from the more rural west follows the 98th meridian of longitude and it sharply divides the American population in half. An overwhelming 80% of all Americans live to the east of this line. And that's where I was born in New Jersey. That's where I grew up. Um, that's where my parents are now in Florida. But when I come west of the Mississippi, yeehaw! <laughs> A lot more open spaces, a lot more beautiful places in nature to camp. Head west, baby. <laughs> oh, it's very bright out. Oh, okay. It's our morning view. What do you think, guys? Good morning! <laughs>
We made it to Fort Worth. I wanted to get out of Dallas before rush hour and before the morning. So we drove last night and didn't get in here until after 11. We're in a crack row right now. Of course. I wanted to find a Spurs camping, but it was just going to slow me down. So it is what it is. Our other side of the morning view. It's funny, I used to live in Fort Worth with my first husband and kids. And I went to college in Denton, Texas, <laughs> um, Texas Women's University. And I used to drive up this way, and there was nothing up here. They were just building Texas Motor Speedway. And this was just all empty, nothing. So it's kind of surprising driving through here because the city doesn't end. It just keeps going on and on. So today we're traveling through West Texas and hopefully making it to New Mexico. Texas is huge. I don't know if you can see, but there's a Bucky's over there. I think that's where we're gonna be headed to get some gas. So this is my temporary battery charger fix until I get my DC to DC charger hooked up correctly. Um, I disconnected it because it wasn't working right and I think it might have been an app issue but now I have to get it connect reconnected to troubleshoot it. I haven't done that. I thought I had two weeks before I was going to see my daughter, but the baby came a month early. So best laid plans, right? Babies don't care. <laughs> um, so this is my fit. I'm charging it with this portable solar power station. And I also have a Jackery 2000 that's charging in the car. So this is gonna work. eating my usual Cracker Barrel breakfast, which is a side order of Impossible Sausage, sourdough toast, and then I put it all together <laughs> with whatever dressing I have, tomato, lettuce, pretty good. Tumbleweeds. Ooh. 
what if that can like mess up your car? We do not want to get up this morning. It's 46 degrees in here. Uh, I felt so nice being woo, under the blankets, snuggled under the blankets, nice and warm with <laughs> doggies. <laughs> Way low. <laughs> We're at a New Mexico rest area. I drove until it was dark and I couldn't drive anymore, so I was going to stop in Santa Rosa, but <laughs> I just couldn't take it, so we just stopped here. It was, it was actually pleasant. Um, I didn't hear a lot of trucks or a lot of road noise, so it set a little bit back. So, okay for New Mexico rest areas. on BLM land in Arizona. I made it to Arizona. I'm only five hours away from my daughter. <laughs> this is where we are. I parked right next to the street because it was dark out and I tried to go down where all the other campers are. It was hard finding a spot in the dark. So I, I turned around and just stayed here. Um, once it got later, the road noise calm down and we had a we had a pleasant night's sleep it was raining when we woke up but it looks pretty nice now Arizona <sighs> I love the quiet <laughs> and today I get to meet my new granddaughter <laughs> and see my daughter it's a beautiful day we're on. It's cold. We're on. Bailey. The last leg of this 33 hour road trip. This is day five. Day five. There was a time when I could drive like 10 hours by myself and be okay. Uh-uh, I can't do that anymore. It's turned into a, a really long journey. But I'm almost there today. I'm almost there. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and I'm in Arizona. Wow. And I need to get my truck tended to because I wasn't supposed to leave for another two weeks. So I plan to get into the shop, get an oil change, tires rotated, have it checked out. And I just got on the road and started driving when my daughter went into premature labor. So I didn't do any of that. My change oil soon just came on. And um, also my key fob <laughs> is um, needs to be changed. And the tire sensor, the right front tire sensor stopped picking up so I got a warning light about that so a lot of things to maintenance when I get to Las Vegas made some traveling food yum This is pretty cool. I'm driving down Route 66 and this place 
just caught my eye. I'm gonna go take the dogs for a quick walk and get some video of this. <laughs> That must have been exciting, like in the 50s, 60s, to be on, I guess it was more like 50s, right? I have to look up Route 66 and see what the history of it was. Established in 1926, Route 66 was the iconic highway linking Chicago to Santa Monica, California. It symbolized freedom and opportunity during the Great Depression, served as a vital wartime route during World War II and embodied America's post-war love for the open road. The rise of the interstate highway system led to its decline, but its legacy lives on, and Route 66 remains a symbol of the American spirit of exploration and adventure. So I just talked to my son-in-law, my daughter is still in the hospital, um, she's just having problems with her blood pressure, her heart rate. She had a high risk pregnancy because she had blood pressure issues and they were afraid of preeclampsia. So she's still there, which is good that she's there and being observed and the baby's with her. So I should be there this afternoon. <laughs> ah. like that. I got to meet my new granddaughter, Cecilia. Cece. My daughter was discharged from the hospital that day, and mom and baby are doing great, and I am overjoyed and so happy. Thanks everyone for coming along on this mad dash across the country with me. I'm sending everyone warm, happy vibes from Nevada.